All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is Accentuate the Negative 4.2 and 4.3. This is a two-part problem. We have distributing operations, 4.2, and then the distributive property and subtraction, 4.3. Do one, then do the other, um, but kind of give yourself two days to complete it. Um, they basically cover a whole lot of the same thing, which is why I've combined them. Um, and your learning target for this is I can apply the distributive property. What is the distributive property? Well, let's go on about that. The distributive property, okay, takes advantage of how multiplication works with parentheses to change how multiplication works with items that are grouped within a parentheses. We talked about in order of operations, how we do what's inside a parentheses first. That if we group multiplication in different ways, we can sometimes get different answers. Well, sometimes we can actually shorten the problems that we're working on by taking advantage of how multiplication works. It, it's one of these things that it's a bit easier to show you than really describe. So here's your first example of how the distributed property works. And I've got this really fun picture in the corner here that I just, I just had to put down because it, it's kind of cool. Um, I have four times whatever is, whatever is inside that parentheses. Three plus two. Now let's solve it using order of operations first, the way we normally would. I would do three plus two first. I would get five inside that parentheses. And I would do four times five, right? And four times five gives me 20. But now let's say I make that more complicated. Let's say I separate that out into two separate problems. I do four times three plus four times two. Well, four times three simplifies out to 12 and 4 times 2 becomes 8, which then add together to become a 20. So really, what I can do is I can spread that 4 out and do 4 times 3 and 4 times 2 and spread out that multiplication problem in one nice easy step rather than having to worry about what's inside the parentheses first. Okay, And that'll make more sense when we start using things like formulas, which I'll do in some later problems here. But first, let's take an I This is expanding the problem. Basically, I take something that's nice and neat and compact, 4 times 3 plus 2, and made it 4 times 3 plus 4 times 2. I just spread that problem out in order to solve it. Let's take a look at the opposite, factoring. Now, I've got 4 times 3 plus 4 times 5. I want to make that a simpler problem to work with. Well, based on what we did in the last problem, I know I can just take what is common about both of these problems. Both of them are being multiplied by 4. So I take 4 times, I'm going to use that dot for a time symbol. I really need to get in the habit of that. 3 plus 5. And now I have a much smaller, much easier problem to work with. And if I apply the distributive property, okay, and reverse that, I would do 4 times 3 plus 4 times 5. The exact same thing I started out with. So as you can see, I just take, I took a really big complicated problem and shrunk it down so it's got, you know, an easier set of steps to work with. And that's called factoring. We're taking a common factor. In this case, we're multiplying everything by 4. We're taking that common factor and we're putting it outside. We're putting it on the side rather than mixing it all in. So, another example of this. Okay, if we had a real life example, shopping. Let's say I have a 25% discount. So I'm trying to get 75% of the original cost. 
right? Um, if I do that, okay, I could do 75% of everything I buy, okay? I can add up everything first, or I can say 0.75 times this item plus 0.75 times the second item plus 0.75 the next item. And I still get the same answer either way. So if you think about it, it it's, like, it's like if you apply a discount on each item or you just add them all together and apply a big old discount. Okay? Either way, we're just kind of finding an easier way to work with it. And they work both ways. So now, let's go ahead and show some expanded forms. Let's expand these out. Well, I take 3 times 6 plus 2. Well, let's do 3 times 6 first. And what am I using? I'm, I'm adding these, so I'm going to put plus. Got to make sure I have my parentheses in here. We don't always use them, but we're going to use them in this book. And we do 3 times 2 for the second one. So 3 times 6 plus 3 times 2. And for the second one, well, now I've got a variable in here. Remember I said variables are going to show up from time to time? Well, they did. I do 2 times x, or just for short, how about we make that 2x plus 2 times 5. Both of those are acceptable. And let's say I do 3 times 4x. Well, you know, let's take this a step further. What's 3 times 4? 3 times 4 is 12. I'll do 12x plus, well, what's 3 times 5? 15. Also, perfectly acceptable answer. All I did was streamline these. And I suppose I could streamline these two. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. I could easily have had 2x plus 10. And I could have had easily this just equals 6 as my answer. So let's try this one. 5 times 3x. Well, 5 times 3 is 15x. And 5 times 4 is 20. And there you go. I've expanded these problems. I've made them bigger. Okay, I've distributed that multiplication problem across the whole problem. But now let's hit some things that are a little bit more complicated. And it gets more complicated because we add subtraction. Okay, so now I've got subtraction in the distributed property. So I've got negative 4 times x minus 3. Well, if I factor this guy out, I end up getting negative 4 times x minus what's negative, what is 4 times 3? Negative 4 times 3 would be negative 12. But now I run into a problem because I have a negative times a negative. So I could kind of view that minus sign as also making this 3 negative. And in fact, even if that 3 is positive, it's having a negative effect on the rest of the equation. You know, it's, it's subtracting a value. So I could treat this as a negative times a negative, or look over here. I basically have a negative minus a negative, which we know just makes the whole thing one big addition problem, right? It basically turns this into an addition problem instead, which makes 12 a positive value. So when I actually solve for this, when I simplify it out, I get negative 4x. That doesn't change. But now, I mean, I could write this as minus negative 12. Or I could save myself a whole lot of trouble and just put negative 4x plus 12. And they would give me the exact same answer.
right? And I've just made my life a whole lot easier. Okay. And that's what, what, what you have to think about. You have to think about what does the negative value do now when we're multiplying everything by a negative value. And basically what it does is it makes opposites of everything. Okay. Let's try it again. This time with negative 3x minus 15. I want to factor this guy out. I want to see if I can rewrite this guy in different ways. Well, I can rewrite this as negative 3 times x minus, okay, negative 3 times 5, okay, or I suppose I could rewrite this even more and, you know, make this into Or, on second thought, that really doesn't work, does it? Because then, if I do negative 3 times x, I get negative 3x. But now I've got minus negative 15, which is not what I'm trying to get here, is it? No, it's not. So, I need to find a way to factor this guy out in, so that I don't lose its original value. This is not going to work. I could still take that negative 3 out, but instead of doing, but I can do negative 3 times x plus negative 3 times 5. And now this becomes negative 3x, and I have a plus, well, a minus, really, 15. And I get my original problem. So once again, it gets a lot trickier on the second half of this two-part lesson when you're asked to take into, into account what those negative numbers are going to do to the problems. Okay? And your classwork for today is going to be Lesson 4.2 and 4.3. Once again, give yourself a day to do each one. Take your time and do 4.2, Distributing Operations. And then do 4.3, The Distributive Property and Subtraction. All right? Um, do a few of the problems. And if you get a little bit lost, ask Mr. Briggs how you can check your math. He does have a method for doing this. Okay. Go ahead, have some fun, and good luck.